Welcome back to the shipyard. Today we're doing a top 11 list. The rationale for that, I went through all the OPs that have ever existed, and I said if I had to replay an OP exactly as the rules are written, no changes whatsoever, which ones would I want to play again? I made that list, and I came up with exactly 11 and I feel like when that happens, I don't want to just cut one off. So based on that, here's my list. At number 11, Year of Hell. And this was a fantastic Voyager episode. It gave us the Krenum weapon ship. A really cool episode. And the OP implementation was pretty good. Limited time. Because of that, you really had to make things work. Yes, the event led to a fair amount of jousting, but it also made people make a choice. Did you want to set up your entire fleet in the corner, completely away from the wave? Or did you want to set up kind of in the middle, set up on an angle, go for that? I feel like now, with some of the jump cards we have with some of the maneuver control that we have in this game, this event would be all the more interesting, and I would really like to see it happen again. Number 10 is Attack on Gowron from Klingon Civil War OP1. I really enjoyed this event. I thought it was a good use of being able to hide a card or not, giving you build options, Klingon discounts, all of that was a very interesting take on things. I think it was a well-done OP. I think the entire Klingon Civil War arc was well done. I would replay anything from it, pretty much. But this is the one that stands out. The other two events are just kind of, eh, they're there. If somebody says, hey, you want to play it? I would. But this specific event is the one I go, ooh, yeah. Cool scoring, really good fights, really good ways of thinking about how to build fleets. And for that reason, it's on the list. Number nine is Tholian Web. And I'm going to get flack for having it this low on my list. But here's the reason. It just leads to everybody getting into the center. So it's board positioning. It's who can get there first. And if you make one wrong move, you're dead. If your opponent makes you make a wrong move, you're dead. And I don't like that. I don't think that this OP is forgiving at all. And while that is cool for some people, I don't know that I would really enjoy it at this point. I'd probably enjoy the exercise. I'd probably like it as a one-off. But I don't think I'd want to play three rounds of it. So, uh, Tholian Web, I'm dubious, but I still think it's fun. The actual implementation, who knows? Number eight is Search for Spock. Uh, this was classic movies, OP2. And my rationale for this is that I, I loved the deployment zone. Most of your ships in the back, one ship up near the planet. And then having that away team, having bonus crew to fight, and being able to put crew in weird places, either crewing a bio ship, putting bonus crew on like a Borg ship, being able to mix and match crew, uh, pull the crew you wanted to be able to use against your opponent. It was a really interesting battle. And knowing when to use your crew for the away team, when to pull them up to make them safe. A lot of interesting choices that we don't normally see. And I like that it was more than just a space game for a moment. So it gets a spot based on creativity. Number seven is Trouble with Tribbles. And this didn't have the best execution, but it had a really great idea and it made you play in a different way. I liked having Tribbles on the ships. And it was annoying, but fun to say, oh, I got Tribbles. I got to deal with these. Either I got to shred them, I got to just suck it up and deal with it, or, and this was the fun one, I gotta beam them over to my opponent and say, ah, now you gotta deal with those, and I like that there was a no backsies policy on them, at least for one round. So Tribble with Tribbles, a, a really fun one. Number six, 
Unimatrix 0, or Resistance is Futile OP2. This was the event where you took two different fleets. You had a Rebel fleet, and you had a Borg fleet. And that was tricky for some people, because not everybody had enough Borg ships. But the cool thing was that any ship was Borg. And then in the Rebel fleet, Borg ships were independent, or something like that. The build options with this were crazy. It's the only OP that's ever existed where you bring two different fleets. That alone makes it replayable. Because you have to have two good fleets. Because you never know. You, you just don't know what your opponent is going to run. And you gotta be prepared. Number five really recent in a mirror darkly this event kind of had a little bit of everything it had a planet on the board granted you wanted to get nowhere near it it had little mission tokens that kept getting added to the board and you didn't want to get anywhere near those so it had a little funnel that you wanted to fight in but if you could make your opponent go into the mission token area then that would do damage and that made for a lot of interesting decisions. Uh, again, maneuver control was a thing. But this is one where uh, I ran some really silly things, and that kind of cost me my chances of doing well. But even in running silly things, I still had a ton of fun, and I ended up doing all right. But with a more competitive fleet, I think I could actually do pretty well, in this tournament. Number four is a classic for me. Uh, it's one of the last ones I ran twice, and that is Battle of Wolf 359, or Collective 2. This was the quote-unquote cooperative scenario. Uh, you couldn't do anything to mess with your opponent or attack your opponent, uh, and it was a how much damage can you do to the Borg cube? And the winner is the person who can do the most damage. It's a novel concept. When the goal is just pump damage, pump dice, pump quality, I can work with that. And there's so many more ways to do that now than there was two years ago. I think it would be a lot more fun to see. Back then it was kind of a, well, do you go Klingons or do you go Keltons? Now... So many more avenues to explore. Number three, Arena. I don't think I'm going to get any arguments from people on this one. An event where you play for a bit, and then a captain battle takes place on the planet, and then everything changes after the battle. Uh, the winner gets to basically rearrange the board. Planet comes back in a different spot, ships come back in different spots, and yeah, really fascinating event that is so bizarre. It just works because that episode of TOS was incredible. It just had to exist. So Arena, a, a great scenario, one that if you haven't played, you need to go play it. Number two is the Siege of AR-558. This was Dominion OP3, and it was the troops on a planet. It was a challenging event. It was the first, and I believe only, event where if you won the scenario by winning the planetary battle, you got an extra battle point, which battle points are the wins in tournaments. You get two for a win, one for a loss. So by doing the scenario, it wasn't just fleet points. It was a battle point. It helped you not only on the day, but in the six-month grand prize. And miss that avenue of more ways to score big, meaningful points. It was also a really interesting planetary battle because you had all these little troop tokens. They're like the size of mission tokens, but uh, each player had their own color and... You were removing troops, you were adding troops for actions, uh, you were trying to bring more ships into the battle. 
and everybody was engaged, everybody was messing around with things, and it just worked. But it worked really well. It truly felt like a planetary siege. Last, but certainly not least, my number one is peak performance. The scenario where ships died, your opponent got points, but then ships came back. Yes, it made for a long OP. You were guaranteed to run for three hours, plus all the transition time. But that's okay, because I don't think anybody likes, oh, eh, 20 minutes, I lost. Uh, what do I do for the next 40 minutes? Nothing. Okay. No, you got to play for an hour. You got to try to get points. You fought, and that was a fantastic thing. Tholians were relevant in this, because as long as not all of your Tholian ships were dead, your Tholian web stayed on the board. So you just staggered your Tholian ships and made it so your opponent couldn't kill them all. That was so much fun to see. Uh, annoying, but fun. Peak performance, such a different idea in this game, uh, and one I'd still like to see what people come up with. It's a fascinating idea. It's a fascinating way to play the game, and I think that that type of creativity truly highlights what Attack Wing has. So I hope that this list as a whole kind of highlights some of the best of the OPs. I think if there's a theme through my list, it's events that do things differently, right? Whether it be different scoring, different map elements, different fleet constructions, different deployment zones, that's what I want. I want things that are different in the game. Uh, and if you're going to be kind of the quote-unquote same, then at least have a different spin on it. Have a time constraint. Have something moving. Have a way to interact with a part of the game that alters the flow of a standard joust, because nobody likes a standard joust. Those don't make for fun OPs. They just don't. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care.